So let's talk about that difference uh, between first party and third party. Um, first party comes from your own site cookies and is stored and read purely by your site. Um, this is everything that the user tells you um, about themselves through on-site behavior, um, opting in to sharing their information through chats, forms, and other means. Um, whereas third-party cookies can um, come from sites like Google, Facebook, uh, the like, and track browsing behavior across um, their entire browsing history, collect that demographic and geographic information, and then we can use this uh, third-party data to harness um, and gain valuable insights into what their specific interests are. So if we pop and there's a in lot of information there, right? Like it's <laughs> so much so that that's kind of why they're like, okay, maybe this is too much. And it's, it's you'll talk about this. I'm not gonna see the thunder. <laughs> uh, I'm sure y'all know it's why you're here, but change is coming down the pike and a lot of it has already arrived. So looking at just the privacy landscape with GDPR, data protection authorities across the EU um, are now aligning for the goal of digital sovereignty in Europe and through enhanced enforcement of that data protection. Uh, often when you're at the on a website, you'll see that shield banner, lock button, whatever it is to meet um, those requirements for GDPR. It's also growing. Um, I believe Brazil has also entered um, and it will probably again continue to expand across. Um, with CCPA obligations on data collection for that do not sell that you've seen um, for Californian residents goes back to data that began collecting um, first day of this year and enforcement will start next year. Um, so it's right around the corner. If we look at some of the oncoming restrictions as well, I'm sure you've seen this all over your LinkedIn, your Instagram, even TikTok cannot get away from all the memes. Um, so Chrome isn't the first browser to phase this out, the third party cookie. It was a huge announcement, however, and in late 2019, um, Chrome was making up more than 56% of the web browser market. Um, and this phase out is going to come in mid 2023. And on top of that, Apple has instituted those large privacy efforts that you've seen um, from Find My iPhone to iCloud, the whole gamut, like ATT, which is an app tracking transparency, where you get the yes, no on who can collect your data. Um, mail privacy feature, I'm sure when you're filling in a form, you see the option, assuming you have an iPhone, um, to hide your email or use um, like a really long string of numbers and letters. And then within Safari, Apple is stripping away IP address tracking um, that is being sent to those third party cookies. So truly kind of slashing down on that privacy or a third party cookie sharing as a means of privacy. Um, so if you go to the next slide, we'll see that uh, privacy is it, this is the rule. And if we weren't on Zoom, I would ask you all to raise your hand for the number of times you've read about a breach in the news um, that made thousands, um, if not millions of people's personal information publicly available. Um, a few th that come to mind are Target, Google, banks, um, everywhere. And you name it, you can continue to add to it. Uh, this becomes even more important in highly regulated industries like that, that bank that we mentioned, so financial, um, healthcare services, things of that sort. Um, and as a business today, it's on us to maintain those privacy requirements and to get their consent so that you can engage with them in a personalized way and to keep their data safe. Yeah, if my so, bank yeah. leaked my data, I would break up with that bank. And I think that goes for like anyone that's got a significant amount of information on me. Um, and that's the thing, like, it's not like, you know, you know, your company has all this data, like this data exists elsewhere outside. And it uh, is, it's just, it's, it's, there's such a vivid picture of you um, in a CDP somewhere that it's nice to know that, you know, Big Brother's looking out for us in a good way this time. We'll talk through um, what we're going to do going forward, right? So first of all, first party data, 
and um, Justine, Ruth is going to talk a little bit about Zero Party Day in a minute, is for sure the long-term winner in consumer marketing. And that's because it, A, addresses the privacy concerns that we are all um, concerned about. And it allows or, like organizations like Drift, like your company, to build a stronger relationship with your, your customers, your, your audience, like not even just your customers, but everyone that interacts with you. And while marketers are pretty freaked out about this upcoming data loss, as we just saw, I'm going to go so far as to say that I think this is actually a really good thing for marketers because um, all this unearned data has been a crutch to us, right? And now that we don't have it, uh, we're focusing on what our jobs really should be as marketers. And this is easy to forget sometimes. I forget it all the time that we're here to create engaging experiences for the people that want to engage with us. Um, we're trying to impress, wow, win over, provide value, provide content to our most important audiences. And without that data to help inform us, we've got to, you know, we're going to be forced to get back to the craft of marketing and to providing really relevant and helpful experiences to the people we care most about.